Okay, you guys, hey, welcome back. It's time to begin. First step is disassembly and deciding which parts need to be seamlined. I've got here a box labeled with all the different parts so that I can keep things well organized as I disassemble. This is gonna be off to the side. I'm just gonna deposit pieces in there as we go along. I guess I'll start with the backpack. One thing I'm gonna do for you guys is, I can't show footage since I didn't capture any, of me snap building and prepping the kit for disassembly, but that's an important part of this. Um, and I'll go over briefly what I do to prep for disassembly. It's very simple, uh, cutting pegs, and I'll show you as we go along. Ooh, this is well constructed. I cannot remember how to take this apart. That's the thing about the previous kit that I was working on, the, uh, the Kotobukiya piece. I think it's easy to take apart because the things are generally not very well fitted. So that's how that comes apart. That's not what I expected. You can see here, I've cut the pegs at a diagonal. As you know, they're usually flat. Cutting them at the diagonal here makes it a lot easier to just whoop, pull it apart when it comes time to do that. Not a lot of seam lines so far. It's good news. This whole part is real nice. Now, any joints that exist, we want to take these apart because these we want to paint metallic. Yeah, anything that's sort of part of the frame, something that I want to differentiate from the outside. This one has the sticker. Off with you. Yeah, color correcting with stickers. Yeah. So I've snapped together the high-grade Hugo and Helmwig Reinkar. I snapped those together yesterday, the high grades from uh, Iron Blooded Orphans, for those of you who don't know. I did not put the stickers on them. Thank God. I'm not going to put stickers on these anymore. At all. I'm just going to leave them off. I'll have to show you guys my collection of snap builds sometime. Very big backlog. They've all been prepped for disassembly. In the, uh, in the way that I showed. This is going to be very... This is going to need some nice sanding and dishwashing. It's got all that gunk stuck to it from the sticker. Pain in the butt. Always be careful when disassembling. You don't want anything to break. See, there's the flat pegs. And that's one that's been prepped. Nice. See, that just fell right off. Because it's been cut. Well, this one is fragile. You have to be careful here. When disassembling, uh, if you can get a part separator, I would recommend doing so. But for the most part, all I do is I get my nail in between the two pieces. Yeah, it just pops right out. You're not always going to be that lucky. Luckily, Bandai kits are pretty well fitted, so that's not a problem. No seam lining necessary so far. Now, overall, for this piece, I'm not going to need it. I don't see any spots where. Yeah, see, that doesn't go together. I don't see any spots where that's required. The thing about those, those joints is that you don't want to prep those because those are meant to be a certain tightness. I did not put the sticker on this one because I thought it was crap. They're all crap. Nice. Slips right off. Oh, gotta be careful there, you see that? This is coming out with the tip. Yeah, gotta be very careful because that'll snap easily. <laughs> this is gonna be the same line right here. Right there. So, yes, good. Separate piece. This lifts up. Looks like this is a joint held in between. So we're gonna take this. We, just, we now have to pay special attention to this piece because we've determined that it needs to be seamlined. Okay, this comes out. Joints in here, we're gonna leave those. You do not want to seamline this piece and then not have these pieces already inside. That sucks. 
when that happens. Okay, so this sucks, because this is a off-color piece that needs to be in here, and this needs to be seam-lined. And they're not the same color, so this is going to need to be masked later on, that's a pain. One more thing to mask, but it needs to be done. So it goes just like that. It's just like that. This has the freedom to move, and this seam line is sealed. From top, this is okay, but the sides here... Actually, no, that's an implied panel line. Aha! Uh -huh. Very good! Yeah, see? That's not a seam line, it's an implied panel line. So, this is coming apart. Fully. Emphatically. Totally. Completely. Irrevocably. So... Son of a gun. There we go. Yeah, this is all one piece. Ooh, nice piece. Got a little detail in there. Look forward to painting that later. Nice. Nice. Okay, the joints. We'll just leave those in there for now. It doesn't really matter. This is ABS. I might want to paint that chrome. Actually, I think I'm going to paint all of these chrome. Some kind of metallic color. Because they do peek through. You can see them a little bit. So I want them to look nice. I believe this just comes apart. No. Now, this needs to be seam lined. You can see that. Faint line right along the edge here. Yeah, right there. We're gonna make that this piece. Wanna see a magic trick? I'm gonna make this seam line disappear. Ta da! No, wait, gotta, gotta save that line for later. <laughs> Come on. How does this come apart? Okay, good. We have an in the way right here in the gap. Push our fingernail in. Very carefully. Sort of shimmy it open. Shimmy, shimmy. Wiggle, wiggle. Boop, boop, boop. Like that. Other side. Nope. Oh, there we go. Now we can do the other side. And that side's closing, so we want to hold both sides open. Push. 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 It's a boy. There we go. Little by little. So nothing breaks. And the integrity of the piece is preserved. Yes! Success! This has been prepped, but that was a pain in the ass to get apart. Sometimes it'd be like that. Good. Two pieces. Needs to be seamlined. I'm gonna put this aside. Not in the box. Oh, you know, actually, might as well just seamline it right now. That'd be the smart thing to do. Yeah, nothing fits in here. No moving parts, it's just one piece and it fits onto everything on the exterior. So this is a nice seam line piece, thank god. Don't need to plan this piece at all. It's just simple. Put two pieces together and glue. So here. Now we're on to a seam lining tutorial. Poof. Okay, transition. Welcome to the seam lining tutorial. Here we have Tamiya cement. Comes with an applicator on the inside. This stuff is super gooey. This stuff melts plastic, don't get it anywhere besides the spots where you want it to be. Now. This is the backpack from the TR6 Hazel 2 that holds the cannon, back cannons. So where I need to put the glue is just right here, starting here. This dips underneath and hides behind this energy accent. All the way around, all the way around. Pretty straightforward job, but the back here with all the connectors doesn't need to be seamlined because that will most likely be covered up. Okay. This is a straightforward job. Good way to introduce the concept. Okay, I'm gonna apply some right here. I'm not gonna apply some any right here because that dips underneath that uh, detail. And I don't want that to be ruined at all. There's no seam line there. So all we're doing is we're applying the cement to the spots that need to make the seam line scarce. Get scarce, fool. There we go. Let that settle on the plastic event and do the other side. Yeah, see? There's that detail right there. That's going to cover the seam line underneath it, so we'll go around it. Going to give it a wide berth so it doesn't get melted at all. There we go. What we're going to do is we're going to take that and this 
I'm gonna put them together. Simple as pie. And we're gonna squeeze. We're gonna squeeze until you can see some of the glue come out the sides. There we go. You can already see. See that? See it's raised on the edge? That's because the plastic that's been melted is now being pushed out the sides when I push this piece together. It oozes out. But that's nice. The cement brings it with it. Okay, we want more of that. The more of that, the better. Because when we go to sand, everything below this ridge will be smooth and all one piece. So here now we have the follow-up, the extra thin cement. This one dries fast and it reacts with the plastic fast. So don't breathe it in. Don't get it on soft tissue. Don't get it anywhere it's not supposed to be on the kit. And you're good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to apply this along the edge. And what that's going to do is it's going to get the cement in any places where there's a gap and fill that in and melt the plastic there. So when we go to squeeze again, that plastic will come out. I don't want to put too much because I don't want to melt the outside. I just want the cement to slip into the seams. Act as fluids do. Get everywhere. Pull up inside. Very good. Now, I'm going to show you the magic. You squeeze, you can see. Come out. You see that? And ideally, what you want to do is you want to hold this position for, well, let's say, about a minute. Do longer if you want to be more thorough. Uh, it's good to, if you want, you can buy a clamp and just have it hold the piece for you. Another budget solution is to masking tape it tight. <laughs> Not sure how well that works, but I've seen some people do it and I've done it myself and it seems to work okay. There we go. You can see that ridge now, real nice. Now we just let that sit on its own. That goes in the box now, now we move on. Nice. Okay, let's do the weaponry first. Oops, that's... I'm actually going to shift all of this to a different compartment that has more space. Time to come down off your stand, buddy. I know, without all of her weaponry, I bet you she can stand. Indeed. What a lovely kit. I love it. It's kind of cute. It's all looking cool. It's an appealing mixture. Though these skis don't really let her, don't have a lot of friction to them, so you can't really lean back. Okay, the shield. Seam lining. Not really. Nope. No seam lining required here. So I'm just going to take it apart. Call it Gucci. Question is, which way does this go? I bet you it comes up back. Yeah. This is a weak point right here. It's on a lever. Snap that right off. So be very careful. Always pull, disassemble from the most stable parts of the kit. Use your common sense. There we go. Nice. Little details here too. Little raised details. Perfect for hand brushing later. Hmm. What a great kit. Great kit. These P Bandai kits tend to be more expensive because they're limited release, and they're only released through the online premium Bandai outlet. They're not sold retail at all. In some places, depends on if the store you're shopping from prioritizes buying them. This gun does not fit in her hand very well. I have to mention that. Just sort of you gotta tuck it under the shoulder to get any stability whatsoever. But if you try to hold it in the hand just by itself, like put it out, just like rotates in place. <laughs> It's the hand. This is right arm, and I have a spot for that. Right there. This gun is going to need to be seam lined real hard. Yep, on the barrel too. All the way around. I wonder about that actually. It's not. It is a panel line because it's a wide. It's a wide gap. The barrel don't know. The barrel's going to have to. This is a really funny little gun. It's just two pieces slapped together. No articulation whatsoever, no part separation, just, you know, Neanderthal. Two pieces going, huh. So what I'm gonna do, so this is fine to just have all of one piece. I'm just gonna seam line the barrel. The rest of the piece is okay, I think. Oh man, yeah, see, I didn't, I did prep. But these, has, this, these have some big pegs, sort of flat too. So we're just gonna put some cement right there and press that together. To get the barrel all of one piece. Don't have that nasty seam line running through. 
Yeah, it's supposed to be a panel line. Okay, so the disguise is the same line as a panel line. I'll take it. Oh, not in the back, though. No, actually, yeah, that's fine, because the other side right here, too. Okay. Take some of our cement up. Fell over. Stand tall. One wart. See, it's kind of jiggly and loose. That's what I meant when I was talking about the joints. But it holds stands and it's stable. It's just on the verge of not being stable. Okay. Very light touch. Yeah. This piece will be forever together now. It's gonna squeeze this barrel together. Okay. Yeah, we got some of the oozing going there. That's good. We go back to sand and sand that down in piece. Time for the extra thin. Do the same thing. Get that in there. Get the seam line to drink it up. Let me squeeze. Squeeze hard. Really force fuse that plastic together. Ow. <laughs> Alright. Gucci. Right arm, since we've already started. There's that collar. This collar which blocks the head movement. I wonder if you can just do without it. You probably can get away with that. Looks a little bit better, actually. Yeah. This is actually kind of cool. A lot of the um the implied frame, because it doesn't actually have a frame, just has a bunch of parts connected by joints. But a lot of this frame is gonna be painted metallic and it's gonna a lot of it's gonna pop through. It's really cool. Right arm. Shoulder pops out just like this. Yeah, this comes up now. This is gonna be metal. Huh. Most of this is gonna be metal. I guess, hmm. So the dark purple parts are actually the frame, which means we're not gonna have the dark purple frame. Well, of course we're not, because we're gonna paint the woodwork colors, but whatever colors the woodwork uses, it's not gonna be that color, it's gonna be metal. Hmm. I'm beginning to see where this kit is taking me. Yeah, all of this is joint. I guess the sockets I'll keep the same color, but anything with the swivels or the joints, I'll, I'll paint metallic. I like being metallic. So pretty. Hard to beat. Now how does this one? Okay, let's start with the hand. Just get that out of the way. Okay, you can see the plastic getting stressed there, so it's not going to go. Now this is definitely not attached to anything. Yeah, see, it's just on its own. Ooh, don't go flying off into the void. Lost forever. This should just come off now. It's two pieces split. A lot of implied panel lines, except for one right here. There's a seam line right there. That needs to be closed. Or no, it doesn't because it was covered. Right? Yeah, what a great design kit. And then implied seam lines. And then applied panel lines on the bottom. The seam line up top is covered. Nice. Beautiful. So don't need to seam line that one. This comes apart. This will be metallic. It's got a slight weld line. That's not a seam line, it's a weld line. Sand that away. Okay. Oh, you will stand with no arms. <laughs> You've lost weight. Left arm, left arm, left shoulder. This pops out. It's gonna be metallic. It's gonna be a piece. Yeah, what a quality build. This is really nice. For a high grade and from what I've heard for Kanda, it's just a good one. Solid kit and it looks nice. Oh, best of all the worlds. So glad to be back to actually building, <laughs> working on a project again. It's almost been a month since I finished the armor core piece. Slogging through the videos, getting those out for you guys. And now I'm back to the main task, the good stuff. Yeah, see this can be metal. Look at this metal too, looks so cool. Mm, how exciting. Oh, that's right, I need to go buy a new reusable respirator forgot. My last one broke. It lasted me a full kit, but it was a disposable one, 15 bucks. I'm just gonna go buy a nice one that you can clean and replace the filters. Yeah, they're like 30 bucks, 25 bucks. Take the hit. That's an important part of this whole project. Health. Health, health, health. Left leg pieces go here. This is right leg. Go down. Nice. This yellow piece. What am I gonna do about this? I'm pretty sure this is also yellow. What a nice piece. What a nice color. Dark golden. Dark golden, sort of orange, sunset, yellow. Oof, it's very rich. I like looking at it. Hmm. 
Come on, buddy boy. Yeah, there we go. Uh, looks like I didn't check. Okay, yeah. The upper thigh doesn't need seam lines, but the calf and the shin are going to need it. Got a nice line running right down there. I'm gonna make that disappear. This is gonna be metal. I'm gonna paint this metal. That'll, that'll be cool. It'll be displayable. Hey, I'm looking forward to that. Oh man, just got a rush. Okay, so we have three pieces here. This is just... Is this two pieces? Yeah, it is. And it is... Some of it's exposed, which means some of it needs to be seamlined. This whole thing needs to be seamlined. And it's on a swivel joint. So, this, like this. Ah. Oh boy. This is gonna be fun. So this needs to be seamlined, which means this needs to be in it when it's seamlined. But this also needs to be in this when this is seamlined. So this whole piece needs to just be, needs to be treated together. Or is this a weld line? No, it's a seamline because this comes apart. Or wait. Oh, shit. This needs to be kept in, but it's the same color, so that's not a big deal. Yeah, okay, there we go. Okay, so we got the, the knee housing here. So the knee housing needs to be seamlined. And it needs to have both joints in it as it's seamlined. So this is, um, this is going back to the armored corner piece. Seamlining is a pain in the butt. Like this. This needs to be in, this needs to be in. So, and this needs to be in that, so it's all... <laughs> this is all staying together. Okay, let's make sure we got the... This is correct, right? No, it's backwards. I'm going to slightly take apart the left leg to make sure I have this right. Yeah, so this is facing forward. It's the only part that needs to be seamlined. The front and the back is okay. The front will be done. Good. Good. We have plenty of space for sanding later, too. Okie doke. Okie doke. And we seamline this and then we fit it into the, the calf armor section. We're not going to go into the crevice here. Too hard to sand, and I think it's mostly detailed to make the seamline look as a one part. Just like that. Oh no. Oh no! The back is a little bit open. Might be able to slip some extra thin in there. Okay. And now we squeeze. Come on now, let me hear you squeeze. Squeeze! Oh yeah. I don't know how I'm gonna sand that though. Actually, I think it might. Yeah, it's sort of tucked back there. I bet you it disappears behind some of the armor parts. Yeah, it does. Yeah, kind of. That's a real small little detail I'm not going to worry about. Oh, the horror. Good one. Oh, she's been reduced to a shadow of her former self. <laughs> it's like she's on a torture device. We're moving limb by limb. It's kind of dark, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> I'm so immature. There we go. Now this goes from here just like so. Good. The back is kind of open. The front needs to be seamlined. Yeah, the back has some. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's for stowing the, the foot. Okay. So we don't really need to seamline in there. I suppose we do. No, it's impossible to sand. Screw that. I'm doing that. Mm. Yeah, this doesn't strike me as a seam line in the back here. I don't know what it is about it. It's just qualitatively different than the front seam line. This is an actual seam line. This is... It looks good. So, I'm going to leave it. And just do the front. Looks like we have a raised detail at the ankle, bottom of the ankle here. But yeah. Connector. No. 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 Oh shit, almost forgot. We also need to house the ankle joint. Unless the ankle joint goes on exterior and it isn't clipped in underneath. Let's check. Goes on. I think this needs to be fit in first and then put on. Yeah. So 
because of this. Yeah, I think the foot actually. Shit, are you serious? Dang. Goes right there. Oh man, that sucks. Is it gonna be hard to paint metal? Ah, no, it won't. Just mask, mask, spray. Yeah, okay. So that's gotta be in there too. Let's not get any glue near the joints. Start up here. Yeah, last thing you want. Actually, <laughs> that would stiffen the joint. Wouldn't be a completely bad thing. Since that foot is a little bit loose, it makes it hard for the kit to stand up on its own. Getting some glue in there and gumming up the works would help keep things more stable. Standing later. So there we go. So we got the front going now. It's going good. Yep. It's pushing out. We got the nice ridge. There it is. See that fuzzy line up on top? Yeah. Success. Just in case you're wondering, I'm not going to sand these before priming. I'm just going to prime to give myself a nice canvas for drawing on and for scribing so I can see things clearly. And then I'll do all my sanding after scribing and is done. Then we'll reprime really quickly. Yeah, that's it. That one's done. Now it's left leg, left leg, left leg. Nice. Joint. Oh, I just had an interesting train of thought. For some reason I was thinking about, I don't know what triggered this, but I, I was just thinking about At the Mountains of Madness. By, uh, you know, H.P. Lovecraft, cosmic horror genre, probably my favorite genre of fiction ever. Uh, and I was thinking about how it could relate to Gundam, and I think a cosmic horror Gundam movie or series, that would be, that would be awesome. And I could see how that, how they might be able to pull that off. Cosmic horror is essentially a philosophical philosophical horror and I think the Gundam series has always treated psychology and the mind pretty seriously so I think oh cosmic horror Gundam could be a, that could be quite an experience right the whole psychomu psycho frame sort of transcendent consciousness astral plane thing that the new types do what else is on that side man it's not all old, dear, dead friends and stuff, right? It's... <laughs> then we get into Jung and the archetypes and a psyche. Yeah. If psycho, psycho frames and psychomer systems are taken seriously, then that's an essential journey into the unknown for new types. Not just, a, not just prepping them to be frontiermen for, you know, outer space, but also prepping them to be frontiermen into the, the unexplored parts of the the psyche. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's got me thinking now. Yeah. Lovecraft. Mountains of Madness was my introduction to him. What a great, great story. And Bloodborne, of course. <laughs> oh my god, I love that story. I love that universe. I love the weirdness and the, the terror. And the awe, that's the best thing, the awe. The sense of awe you get, as in like awful, awesome, awe-inspiring. What a great experience. It's the most meaningful uh, subjective experience is awe. It's like, whoa. There's more to this place. There's more to this world. There's more to this story. Lurking under there. I'm just out of my depth, a babe out of my depth. Along those lines, though, I guess, I think Gundam Thunderbolt was another great thematically cohesive story. It really stuck the landing. It didn't shy away from its theme at all. It really went after it hard, and so that movie hits hard. It makes me emotional watching it. 
It's so ragged. Yeah, nice. Okay. Oh god. High grades. Disassembly. Seam lining. How nice. <laughs> After working on that armored core piece, this is just a breeze. How refreshing. Goodbye. We'll see you on the other side. You will be new and more beautiful than you were before, my little friend. But for now, we gotta molest you, I'm sorry. Time to take you apart, time to deconstruct you. Yeah, I keep saying this, but what a fantastic kit. What a fantastic kit. Look at this, there's a drum frame. I love that. It's so unique. It doesn't really rotate that much. It's just cool. Let's call this a chest. Seam lines, seam lines, seam lines. Nope. Nope. None. Okay. Onwards and upwards. It's always finding that first part that comes off, though. It's like, hmm, how does this come apart again? Uh-huh. And then the rest sort of follows. Or so. Yeah. Don't use the sharp end. Don't poke it. Right, we want to be gentle. Sure, how this comes out. I'm pretty sure it's just a push. It's fit in there pretty good. I don't want to just leave it though. Oh, here we go. It's really nice and soft. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit marred. That's okay. Comes off. Yeah. Nice. Front. Such a small torso. Nice. Yeah, I think I'm a I think I'm a high grade master grade kind of guy. I do not like real grades. Those are not fun. If it's gonna be a 144th, I kind of like it to be simple and quick. And fast. If it's gonna be as complex as a real grade. I want it at least to be large. That's just me. Real grades are great. I just don't like building them. And I probably wouldn't like painting them either. Yeah, I also have the full armored unicorn Gundam real grade. Sort of. I have like the legs and the waist done and I just stopped. Lost interest, snap other kits together instead. Yeah, no seam lines so far. Or so. Oh, this is the pelvis. The waist. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, this was just here. <laughs> yeah. And there's the red piece in there. See that? Nice. Not such a bad sticker. That one actually looked kind of nice. Could have fooled me. Unless you get up close to it. Seam lines, seam lines, seam lines. Most of these are connector parts, so they're not really going to show. A lot of implied panel lines. I think we're good. Oh, it's got a pinch piece. Pinch it, yeah. Let's try that out. 
snaps. Yeah. Cool. Gucci. It's gone. Face. I guess we'll paint this. Put some black over it. You know what? Might as well appreciate it and stuff. <laughs> make it look nice. Since it's part of the kit. We can make it metal. Yeah, that's cool. Make a metal stand. I like that. Paint it chrome. That's dope. I like Okay, that is all for disassembly and seamlining. Time to move on to the next video.